Now, to close out this week's show, we're going to take a very quick look at this. Uh, this is the M5 Tough. Now, usually, um, I would be uh, showing you me unboxing it, getting to know it, uh, doing a bit of coding on it, maybe trying to do some basic projects on it. Unfortunately, that is not something that I've had the time to have thus far, and I wanted to really do it justice, because this is something that I think A, is going to be awesome, and B, that we're going to give away on the show, and so I want people to know what they're getting into uh, uh, when they enter the competition. Um, because if you're not familiar with M5, they make some truly lovely stuff, mostly based around the ESP32. There are a bunch of different modules that are, are all very easy to use and are designed in different ways, and if you've had any dealings with their M5 stuff, you probably know this already I guess. So I barely had the time to really even get this thing out of the box. They sent it to me and I really wanted to do a feature on it. Unfortunately, there hasn't been time for that. Um, there will be a full feature on this around about the time we give it away when I return to the show um, after my uh, uh, time off. What do they even call that? Father, father time? I don't even know. Um, but this is very reminiscent of other M5 products. It is a tough version of a M5 development kit with a, a touch screen. Um, and it has a bunch of other nice features too. A speaker, it has an extension board, it has a micro SD card slot, which is very cleverly hidden within, um, as you're probably seeing on the screen right now, along with all of the usual extensions you can get. Um, and, uh, and it is run by an ESP32 chip, which as we know are cheap, blazingly fast and very easy to use. So until I can get my hands on this thing properly and play with it, let's just have a look at the actual store page, or the documentation page, as I should say, for this. Um, so uh, this is what we've just been looking at, um, and I really like this design. I really like the fact that they have this uh, this separate thing in and of itself that you can lift out, um, and uh, that this is the screen. This is where the uh, t th this and this are the same thing, essentially. You can turn this upside down, and that is what is on the bottom of it. So in here is where the processor is. There's the micro SD card slot here, and the way it works is that you put the SD card slot into this thing and then push it down into the housing and the rubberized o-ring around here will stop it from getting any water ingress or anything like that and then this extension board which is inside there is as it says for uh, extending things uh, you can plug a bunch of different things in i squared c gpio uart and uh, uh, f uh power and 485 oh serial as well 485 uh, rs485 i cannot speak today sorry i've had very little sleep in the last couple of days so um this, oh, and, and interestingly, it does say there's no protection from immersion in water, but if you look on the M5 Stack Facebook page, they actually tested it fully immersed in water, and it seemed to be fine. Who knows? But the point is, this is designed for rugged environments. So this documentation page will tell you everything you need to know about this little device. Um, and I am a big fan of M5 in general. I really like their approach for making um, self-contained little boards. It is very nice to get a completely raw development board for an ESP32 that you can stick onto a, a, a breadboard and do all of your own stuff. And, I, and I've said many times in the past on the show that I'm a fan of doing things that way because you learn the electronics along with the coding. But it cannot be denied that there is a million and one things that I would want to throw an ESP32 at um, and just getting an off-the-shelf thing like M, uh, an M5 stack uh, device would be way easier, the, be the better way to do it in my case. Um, and the great thing about it is they're all uh, Arduino IDE compliant because they're ESP32s. You can use them with platform I.O. And M5 has their own low-code system. They have a visual programming language, which makes it very easy to get things going. And in fact, one of our longtime regular viewers, Matt, uh, as in Not Enough Tech, Matt, if you go to the Not Enough Tech YouTube channel, I do remember for a while he did some fantastic uh, uh, things showing how that worked. I believe that was M5 stack. If I have that wrong, Matt, apologies. But at least but I suppose I'll still be sending people to your YouTube channel, so I guess it's not the end of the world. Um, if you are interested in the M5 Tough right now, go and have a look at this page. I will leave a link to it in the description of the video. Um, I was not aware of this until it literally arrived on my doorstep and M5 were kind enough to just say, hey, look, you might find this cool. Give it away on the show. It was as simple as that. There was no, uh, there's not much talking involved. They were just like, hey, you know, you, you have a look at this, see what you think. It's really nice of them. Um, and of course, as with everything that passes through my hand, it will get to one of you at some point in the future. So, all of the specifications are here on this page, along with a bunch of technical details. You can even see the schematics of the whole thing here as well. Um, and I am super excited to get my hands uh, dirty with this thing, quite literally, because it is a ruggedized case. There's a million and one things I can think of to throw this at, places I would not want to put a microcontroller usually. Um, and yeah, uh, this is a nice step, I think, to kind of... There's industrial automation on the one hand, and there's us hobby microcontroller people on the other hand, this is a really nice touch. You get a lot of rugged mobile phones uh, that people use, which are designed to be mobile phones, but they're rugged, and now rugged microcontroller enclosures. I like it. Mm -hmm.